Hey everybody, Vanessa here, and we are bringing you yet another fit tip under 10. Today's all about recovery. Super excited about this one, so let's go. Hey everybody, Vanessa here, bringing you today's fit tip under 10, and today's fit tip is all about recovery and the importance of recovery post-workout. So what is recovery and why is it important? And recovery truly is one of the most important aspects of physical activity and a well-rounded program. But, but, but before we dive into what recovery is, we have to understand a few different terms. First term is we have to know what homeostasis is. And homeostasis is a state of balance within the body. And then we also have to take a look at what stress is. And stress is, the, is a stimulus that overcomes or threatens to overcome the body's ability to maintain homeostasis. So in this example of recovery, as we talk about working out, we really have to look at exercise as the stress here, which does include um, physiological muscle tears, dehydration, pain, and some chemical imbalances, blood imbalances of acid base or oxygen carbon dioxide. So this is a stress that's put on the body when we exercise and the recovery is the body's process for restoring that homeostasis. So we exercise, we stress it out, and then we recover and return back to homeostasis. And I really like this definition of what recovery is. And it, recovery is a series of actions that include rest, refueling through nutrition, rehydrate, rehydration, regeneration, resynthesis, reduction of inflammation, and restoration that ultimately returns the body to that homeostasis. So the first component of a good recovery program is looking at overall sleep and sleep habits. And sleep can be really important for recovery, especially if you've had a hard workout. Might be one of the most important components of recovery, but what essentially happens during sleep is the growth hormone is um, released every two hours when you are in a deep sleep. And what that growth hormone does is it um, repairs the muscle, repairs um, bone building, and it does some fat burning as well. Proper sleep also influences the body's response to stress and nutrition, so having a better workout, and then of course, um, wanting to choose healthier options, more nutrient-dense options that are going to help your body recover. And research found that when men and women deprive themselves of sleep, they are much more likely to make, more, uh, make poor nutritional choices. Hydration is also really important in terms of recovery as well. Um, it helps with muscle repair, digestion, and reduces fatigue. Um, really important, obviously, to have solid muscular repair throughout your re recovery portion. Um, it helps with digestion, so of course getting those proper nutrients to where they need to be if you're staying hydrated. And then, of course, the reduction of fatigue. So actually, if you are dehydrated, your blood viscosity um, thickens or and can increase your blood pressure. So by staying hydrated, um, it's really helpful just in decreasing the blood volume overall. One of the biggest components of recovery is nutrition. And this is one we could probably go down a wormhole in. But three things that you really want to take a closer look at in terms of how nutrition can support recovery is total caloric intake, type and balance of all macronutrients, and then of course um, the much debated topic about the timing around training sessions. So it's really important to understand what your total caloric intake should be based on the amount of activity, because if you're not getting enough calories to sustain your activity, you could run the risk of overtraining um, and not recovering. Same thing goes with the type and balance of all macronutrients. So depending on what type of training you are doing, whether it be strength training, endurance training, um, high intensity training, maybe a combination of both, those balances of macronutrients could play a vital role in if you're recovering or not. And then of course, that, like I said, the widely debated topic about the timing around training sessions. Um, there is some research out there that suggests that consuming protein within four hours of a work, consuming protein and carbohydrates within four hours of a workout does help recovery, help restore glycogen stores, as well as repair muscles. Um, but um, when we're looking at general fitness, what's more important is just overall um, what you're consuming in a day. Um, of course, the timing matters a little bit more if you are getting ready to compete in a half marathon or some sort of other athletic competition. Um, there is some science behind that. However, really just looking at overall um, balance of nutrition and macronutrients is going to be really important in terms of recovery. Okay, there's a couple different types of recovery. We've got active recovery and passive recovery. So active recovery, um, examples of that would be walking, stretching, foam rolling. And this actually helps speed up the removal of lactic and hydrogen. It also stimulates the blood flow and signals protein to start to rebuild that muscle. So this is why active recovery is so important. We're actually going to dive into a little bit more about what active recovery is, 
when you can um, incorporate it throughout your workouts, um, during your workouts and post-workout. And then of course, pass re uh, passive recovery requires very little to no movement at all. So lying down on the couch, um, even getting a massage from somebody else uh, is, is a form of passive recovery. And research suggests that doing absolutely nothing, um, so laying down on the couch even though you're really sore, might not be the best recovery technique. So when we take a look at active recovery, we've got really three different times that this active recovery can be incorporated into a exercise regimen. So we've got the immediate active recovery. So this usually happens between reps or immediately following the session. So incorporating a five to 10 minute cool down would be a great way to start incorporating more active recovery in your exercise program. The short term, which is really between sets. So after you do say a set of bicep curls, taking a little lap around the gym, maybe doing a couple jumping jacks, even hopping on the cycler would be a great way to stay, um, to be actively recovering between sets. I personally keep my water bottle on the other side of the gym. So after I do a set, I kind of walk over, grab a drink, record my weights, and then I walk back. So I'm actively recovering between each of my sets. And then of course the training recovery, which is happening between workouts. And this could be something like yoga, walking, foam rolling. Um, and there's lots of different um, there's lots of different ways you can incorporate an active recovery in between workout days, um, but those are just a few examples. So when we take a look at examples of active recovery schedules, I'm going to take a look at specifically strength training. I'm a big, big advocate of women's strength training at least three days a week. And of course, um, we, are, we can look at strength training three days a week, strength training four days a week. But as you can see, active recovery is worked in um, pretty periodically throughout the week. So um, in a three-day strength training schedule, we've got one, two, three, four active recovery days with three days of weights. And then when we look at a strength training regimen for four days a week, we've got one, two, three active recovery days with four days of strength training, um, kind of spread um, sporadically out through the week. So um, really important that you guys are looking at recovery because if we are not recovering properly, we could be or you could be um, struggling with some symptoms of overtraining. Some of these include decreased performance over a seven day period, increased resting heart rate and or blood pressure, decreased body weight, which sounds like a good thing, but um, what that could mean is that your muscles aren't recovering, you could be losing some muscle mass. Reduced appetite or loss of appetite, possibly even some nausea, disturbed, sleep, disturbed sleeping patterns and inability to attain a restful sleep, and then muscle soreness and general irritability, and then reduction of motivation and adherence to your exercise program. This is a big indication for me that I'm overtraining when I'm feeling like I don't really want to go to the gym. I know that I'm probably hitting it too hard. So really important that you guys take a look at your recovery and how that could improve your overall um, training regimen, as well as, um, of course, just improving your progress in the gym, right? A lot of the progress that you guys see, um, you know, as far as toning, weight loss, that all is happening when you guys are recovering properly and recovering enough. So that is it for your Fit Tips Under 10. Um, my name is Vanessa. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and more of these will come in the future. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.